Hello everyone, welcome to Chillopedia, this is Maxim. Today I'm going to have a lot of fun and hopefully you will feel the same way. We are going to explore what will happen if we use different kind of bows. Not usual cello bow, but violin, viola and a double bass bow. Let's see if my cello will still be in one piece after that. And I will try one more kind of bow. It will be a bit of a surprise. And we will get a bit of scientific approach, trying to measure how much sound each bow is going to produce. If you are curious, stay with me and you will see what happens. I get the idea of making this video when some of my younger students would come to a lesson without even knowing that they brought a round bow. They would have an orchestra rehearsal and swap their bow with a violin or viola friend. They would ask me, what's the difference? It sounds about the same. The best way to explain the difference is to try it. We will test each of the bows first playing nice melody on the top strings, then we'll play another melody using two lower strings, and then I will play some spiccato exercise for you. Here is the first bow to try, a violin bow. It's very light, about 70 grams, and let's play something light and nice on top strings. I will play for you the beginning of Humoresque by Dvorak. Wow, the sound is very thin. I don't think that any of the notes got to vibrate properly. The volume was around 75 decibels, pretty normal, but I just didn't feel that this instrument sounds like cello. I wonder what happens if I play on the C string the beginning of Brahms' sonata in E minor. Approximately the same volume, about 75 decibels, but I felt as if I hear myself from a mile of distance. Or maybe that I had a very heavy mute on my bridge. I wonder what will happen if I try a bit of spiccato, beginning of that sour etude number 20 from his 113 etudes. <laughs> It was quite strange. It managed to bounce off the string, but none of the notes got proper articulation and sound quality was so on the surface. The volume was in the same range, 75-80 decibels. But I don't think that even in the worst case scenario we could consider using this bow for any of those three examples. Let's see, maybe a viola bow will be different. And here it is, a student quality viola bowl. It's a little bit heavier, about 73 grams, and it feels a bit closer to the cello bowl. Maybe something like half-size cello bowl? Let's try the same three exercises. First, Dvorak Humoresque. <laughs> like as if stepping on eggshells. I think a few notes were fairly nice, but I heard quite a few notes which didn't even start with the sound appropriate for cello. The volume level was a bit higher, closer to 80 decibels, but maybe it will be more appropriate for the lower strings.
consistent volume between 75 and 79 decibels. It was still a bit too distant. But I would say this time it sounded like half a mile away, not a mile compared to when I was using a violin bowl. And now let's try spiccato. <laughs> I would say almost right. The most of the notes were fairly clear. The volume was good between 75 and 80 decibels. And the articulation was quite crisp. Although I could feel that there is no way to increase the volume playing spiccato. So what do you think? It seems to me that it would not be good for the first exercise, probably not for the second exercise, and if worse come to worse, we could use it for spiccato. Perhaps you have a double bass friend and you had fun playing together and you swapped bow. Well, this monster is two times heavier than a cello bow. It weighs approximately 165 grams. This is a French type of double bass bow. It's a bit shorter than cello bow, as I mentioned to you, much heavier. But let's see, I might be able to use it for all of those tasks. First, Dvorak. <laughs> Believe me or not, I tried to play piano. Most of the notes were well above 80 decibels, and although some of them were quite deep, yet loud, but some other notes just couldn't withstand that much of pressure. Let's see, maybe C string will be happy with this bow. Actually, I don't think that was that bad. A bit on the loud side, but sound quality was quite deep. I could start every note fairly clear and volume was quite consistent, around 80 decibels. I'm a bit nervous to play spiccato on the A string with this ball, but I have to do it. <laughs> I'm lucky that I didn't break any string. Every note was overpowered. Strings just couldn't find a way to resonate properly. In terms of volume, it wasn't even that much louder than other bows. But you could hear that just poor cello is struggling after all of that weight. So what do you think? Probably no for Dvorak. Perhaps yes for Brahms on the C string. And stay away from playing spiccato on the A string. And now I have a bonus ball for you to explore. This time it's another double bass ball, but it is German type of the frog. That means that I will have to hold it something like that. Double bass players, please forgive me, I never studied how to hold this kind of bow, but I'll do my best. To me it feels as if the beginner cellist just grabs the bow in a fist and tries to play. Are you ready to hear the beginning of a humoresque? <laughs> I expected the worst. This bowl, by the way, is about 160 grams. About the same as a previous double bass bowl. But actually, this is three quarter size. So perhaps a full size of bowl of this type will be quite heavier. Let's see what happens on the C string. I think it was fairly decent, not great, and it wasn't even much louder, 
but it's so hard to play. My wrist is already sore. I guess I just need to take a few lessons from double bass teacher. And maybe he will teach me how to play spiccato. But without that lesson, I will try it on my own. Let's see what happens. I don't think I need to continue. Now I have even more respect to double bass players. It's so hard to move this bow fast. Maybe we could use this bow to play on lower strings, but consider how different it is to hold the bow this way and move it and how quickly your wrist will get sore. I guess we need to come to conclusion. Always use your cello bow. Never forget it anywhere. I think it was fun to explore different bowls. This cello survived. Please let me know what you think about that. And maybe I shouldn't even try to use those bows on cello. At any rate, stay curious, creative, and keep playing cello. But perhaps not with this bow. <laughs>